Hey guys, Kyle here, and today I have something that maybe you would never thought you would need, but maybe now you do think you need it, and I'm pretty good at doing that. So today I was working on my uh, data pack for my server project that I've been working on. Maybe you're familiar with it, maybe you're not, doesn't matter. Um, but I came across a small set of commands, very small amount, that do something kind of interesting that might be useful to other people's projects that usually people take the easy route. This is kind of like the hard route. So what are we doing here? So we are checking uh, if people have something and if they do, give it to them only one. If they don't, then give it to them. If they do have it, then don't give it to them. And that concept seems very simple because a lot of people that maybe consider themselves advanced in commands or maybe intermediate in commands can think that that's really easy. So uh, execute if data, if they have the data, type in the thing that you're checking if they have, and then that's it. Then if they have it, then give it, and then you're done. Uh, so why would I make a module that runs 44 commands to say that I have something, and then 51 commands to give me something that I don't have? Why would I do that? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, so essentially, what this module accomplishes is it accomplishes that uh, ability to give something if they don't have it or don't give them if they have it, uh, except there is a 100% uh, dynamic aspect to it in the sense of it works with any item. So if I take that out and I put... I don't know, I will put literally anything, dude. I will put an enchanting book in its hand, okay? Then if I run it, it will give me the enchanted book. Uh, I can take, and uh, if I do have the book, it will just say that I has it. I guess has is a weird statement. So then I can do the same here. I can give it the shears and I can run it. Oh, I have to run this command first. Okay, then I can run it and it'll give me shears or it'll say that I have shears. Okay, pretty simple concept. Uh, I had to take a pause there if you notice because I had a data modify command wrong, which is kind of funny, but we'll get over that as we go through. I'm sure I'll get it wrong again. So today we're going to be coding this system, um, which is really helpful if you're doing kind of asynchronous checking. So for example, I have one of these armor stands uh, and he has the item and then uh, the player right clicks on a villager and then the villager references the item and then chooses whether or not to give it to the player. Uh, of course, this system will break down if you're able to drop the item, but I'm just assuming this is something that you can use if you find a use case for it. It's just a useful tool to know. Uh, so let's just get into it. So unlike usual, I'm actually going to go through the entire creation process. That's kind of what I do with quick P, quick pack. Uh, we kind of go through a simple to code, but also a little complicated pack entirely. So I copied my starter pack, which I'll link starter pack in the description, as well as this pack that we make in the description. Uh, let's call this uh, item compare. Okay. Uh, obviously, you would implement this in your own namespace somehow. You probably wouldn't want to make a separate data pack just for this single module, but I'm only doing it for the case of this. So I'm just going to do IC since the namespace doesn't matter since I would expect you to implement this inside of your data pack somewhere and you can get the references correct. We don't need load or tick really, so we'll just leave those alone. Uh, I, actually, we do need we do need load. So let's go to tags, functions. Okay. So you one important thing to keep here from the starter pack is blocks shulker box. So that's how you're going to retrieve the item. And obviously slash item and item modifiers have kind of replaced shulker boxes, but not for this case. Okay, so then you just need functions. And here you go. So inside your init function, we're going to want to do scoreboard objectives add and I'm just going to add math, but you can use any you just need one objective somehow. Okay, so now we're going to just create a new folder called compare and we're going to have a new folder called start. Okay, a file called start. So this is the beginning. Okay, now I am going to summon an armor stand and I will assume. Uh, let me give it some tags. 
and show arms 1b and then let me just give myself a command block there we go all right so here's our armor stand and he's going to hold our item so we will put tnt all right Inside the init, we also are going to need one more thing, and we'll need a shulker box at 0, 0, 0, or some location. So force load add 0, 0, that's typical practice. And uh, set block 0, 0, 0, shulker box. One thing that you should note is that doing this will not work in future uh, vert in 1.17 and above because uh, force loading chunks is chunk loading is asynchronous. So it will not place the shulker box the first time you type reload. You might have to type reload twice uh, if you don't have those coordinates loaded in the world you're trying to do this okay so inside start this is where we start things so we're going to assume that there is something already loaded here so let me just do uh well no i'll just call, i'll just add this command here so data modify storage uh compare i'll just use the namespace compare but again you change your namespace to yours uh compare in set from entity at e tag equals compare limit e equals one hand items at zero. So this command you would replace with however you figure out what the thing is that you're grabbing the item from. So this will be something you change. So then we have uh, data modify storage compare temp set from entity at s inventory so in order to do this you will need to go through their entire inventory one by one uh, and then you want to figure out how big that inventory is so execute store result score hashtag temp math that makes the scoreboard a fake player that's invisible run data get storage compare temp so that will tell you how big the inventory is and then execute if score hashtag temp math matches one or greater because they could have nothing in their inventory run function compare what did i call this what's the name of the namespace ic ic compare slash loop okay so then in here you have a loop really a recursive loop so in the recursive loop, it will call itself. So all this other stuff can go away, but you can keep that line. Okay, so now you need to figure out if two things are the same. So I've went over this before. Basically, what you're going to do is copy the second thing onto the first thing. If it is able to copy, they are not the same. If it can copy, they are the same, which means you have the thing already. So you just have to go through every item and check if they are able to copy. Okay, so to do that, there is a couple different ways you can do it, but I found a very clever way. So execute store result score hashtag bool math, which will store if it was able to succeed, if the command succeeded. Run data modify storage compare temp. And this is where you put at negative one, which picks the last element of the storage. So you're actually going to edit the last element of what their inventory was because you can overwrite it because you don't care about their inventory. You just care if it can find something. So overwriting things is okay. And then set from storage compare in. Okay. So then execute if score hashtag bool math matches. Uh, and then and then basically you can go, you need to decrement the scoreboard. So scoreboard players remove hashtag temp math uh, one. And then you need to remove the last element. So data remove storage compare temp at negative one. And removing the last element is more efficient than removing the first element because you don't have to change the indexes. Uh, so that's just a little side tip for you to think about, uh, which is actually how I did my item structure saver 2.0 that I'm working on is I actually did everything at the end of the array. Uh, scoreboard players, so this decrements. So you're like, I'm done with that item. This gets rid of the item. Uh, and then I just have to do if score hashtag bool math matches one. Okay. And then when we start, we're going to set the bool to one. Now, if you're confused how this can work with fake players, if you run the start function as everybody, it will have to do one thing per player separately one at a time. So the loop is not is going to run all of the loop for me by myself before picking up my friend who's in the world. So this is multiplayer compatible for sure. 
most of the things I work on, I automatically just make it multiplayer compatible. So this will basically, if it becomes zero, uh, it will still remove the last item and it will not do another loop. So then execute if score hashtag bool math matches one run say does does not have and then execute if score hashtag bool math matches zero run say have have does have does have okay so we're gonna hit reload we're gonna run slash function ic start uh so it says does not have okay that's interesting to us i guess so i guess the one thing you can do is you can do data get storage oh the other thing that you have to do so this is my bad before you do this check there's one little last trick data remove storage compare temp at negative one dot slot okay so these two items will not be the same because uh the inventory keeps a number of the slot of what the item is whereas the hand item does not have the same slot number it doesn't even have a slot so now when i run it it says does have and when i drop it it says does not have very simple 13 commands now obviously somebody's gonna say hey but efficiency yeah yeah so so i'll go ahead and throw it like this and we'll take a look at the worst case scenario uh let me fix this we're going to do worst case scenario. This is the most commands it could take. We're going to put this where our inventory is maxed out, baby. So the worst case scenario is the item is right here, which is 253 commands. So worst case scenario, you're running 253 commands. Most of them are data modifies, which are fairly efficient. Um, so I would say this, this, this thing is pretty darn efficient. I mean, I run this thing you see look at that blip you see the blip that's it you see a blip all right so this thing is pretty efficient i would not run it every tick but you don't need to run it every tick you're not trying to give the item every tick uh it obviously this might not scale well for something where you're trying to give people things that they don't have when it's like a item you're forcing them to have um and that was never the intention this is just to give for example in my case this is to give quest items but make quest items dynamic so i don't have to code them in memory everywhere so then my moderators can go in and edit a quest item if it needs to have some stat changes or if it needs to have look a little different or do they want to make a new quest item um so yeah that's that's how this works now the last step is how to get the item because obviously saying does not have is not good enough so we're going to go into the start function and run function i see compare slash obtain or i'll just say get and then in get i'm going to do data modify block zero zero and this is where the weirdness comes in uh how do you make sure that the block overwrites the previous items and puts the new item well there's a very special way and you do it like that so you have to say items brackets set from there's a couple there's a couple different ways you can accomplish this uh but the way i had it before it did not work when there was already an item in there this does there's a couple different ways you can do it this is just how i tend to do it uh and then you have to do loot give at s mine zero 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 with air that has a custom tag of drop contents that's the loot table that i told you to keep contents otherwise you will just get a shulker box in your inventory so if I hit reload, and now if I run it, it'll give me the item. And now you can test it for a sanity check. You can go ahead and throw a bucket of fish in there. It says I have it. Okay, now it gives me the bucket of fish. Perfect, okay. So if you thought that was useful or cool, uh, just leave a like, please. And uh, let me know what you wanna see next if you have any suggestions. I know a lot of people ask about uh, shader tutorials, but to be honest, shaders are not fun to work with especially for me i mean it's a lot of f3 plus t experiment f3 plus d experiment and i i totally feel you guys in that you don't want to have to do it and you want to you know you just want to have a download out there for you to play with that you know works and i feel the same way but yeah shaders are very annoying and i have not kept up 
with the format so i don't know how 1.17 does them because they changed it maybe i'll get to them eventually but i'm working on some other stuff that's really cool um but other than that go ahead and su I've put any suggestions if you think that it's uh, interesting and uh, other than that thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one peace